Hi, Year 9. Welcome to the first of our two webinars. These are following on from our last live lesson on problem solving for society and design for disability. And these two webinars, uh, we would have actually covered these topics had we been in school. The first is based on biomimicry, and we did mention this in our last live lesson, but we want to dig a little bit deeper into it. So on our screens here, we've got a series of images, and we've got an eagle, and we've got a sketch, uh, an old prototype from the Wright brothers, and an airplane that we know of today. So what is going on here? We've got the ultimate product there of the airplane, and we have the original inspiration, that one being nature. And we can see how nature inspired da Vinci and that ultimately inspired the Wright brothers first solo flight and leading on to an improved design today. So what we are looking at is biomimicry and how nature can inspire design and innovation. So our objectives today is to understand the concept of biomimicry and appreciate how biomimicry can help innovation and good design. And our key words here today are innovation and biomimicry. Just a little uh, run over some glossary there um, in case we have forgotten some of these words. So the word innovation basically means a new idea or method or the use of new ideas and methods. Creativity, which we, we probably know of instinctively, but to explain it a little bit clearer, it's the ability to use original ideas and thoughts to make something. And ultimately, biomimicry is when a design or system is inspired by nature. A little bit of a misconception here uh, when we talk, talk about biomimicry, that biomimicry is just when something looks like nature. But it's far more than that. Yes, we can take inspiration from aesthetics, but we can also take a lot more innovation and better ways of doing things, problem solving, and trying to help our environment and society. So the term biomimicry, it comes from an ancient Greek word, meaning uh, bias meaning life and mimesis meaning imitation. And a simpler definition would be that biomimicry is innovation inspired by nature. Da Vinci realized this, for he, he uh, gave a very good quote Human subtlety will never devise an invention more beautiful, more simple, or more direct than does nature, because in her inventions, nothing is lacking and nothing is superfluous. It's the essence of design. So biomimicry is when a design or system is inspired by nature. And when we did mention it the last time, we said biomimicry is another tool we can use to spark creativity. We're going to run through a series of examples and case studies of this now. The first one there you're all familiar with, Velcro, where you have maybe on your shoes. That was inspired by a Swiss climber out walking his dog. And the burrs that we know of during the summer that float around the, and in the wind, they have spikes on them. And when he was out walking his dog, they, they hooked on to the, the sheepdog's uh, hair. And when he got home, he actually started to think about this and looked under a microscope to notice that these burrs and spikes have hooks. And he started to play around with this idea of fastening, um, how the burrs fastened onto the, the sheepdog's hair, which ultimately led to the Velcro. The next example we want to look at is the bullet train in Shanghai. For instance, the original bullet train made an awful lot of noise when it went through the tunnel. Um, that, that sound impact used to give a, a real loud bang. And you can imagine in a built up city with, with all these trains going through, they needed to solve uh, and, and stop the, the noise. And, and they ultimately looked at the Kingfisher who, um, when he swoops down into the water, um, almost penetrates the water without making any splash um, because of the shape of the um, the beak. And they looked at that and made the, the bullet train more efficient, faster, and stopped the actual noise when it went The through. next example we briefly talked about in the last lesson, the 
the roof structure of the design for the Beijing Olympics um, water cube stadium was inspired by bubbles of air. These hexag uh, hexagon shapes, which are found in nature so often, um, were used in the structure of the roof, which is not only earthquake proof, um, but the actual pockets of air in the roof structure um, captures the sun's rays and th th that heat that's trapped in the pockets of air is used to heat the water. The Mercedes-Benz car here was inspired by the boxfish, which has a very aerodynamic shape. The boxfish design, when they applied some of those principles to the car, it made it more aerodynamic, which made it cut through the air easily, and that ultimately saves fuel and makes it better for the environment. Frank Fish, a biology professor, noticed the edges of a whale fin have these jagged bump edges. He thought that was a mistake when he went to buy a gift originally, but upon research noticed that there's a reason behind those bumps. They actually make the whale cut through the water more efficiently. That now is applied to things like uh, wind turbines, where it increases the speed and reduces drag and noise, making it more efficient and boost the power by up to 20, uh, boost the harness power by up to 20%. Here are some examples of products inspired by nature, some of which we have talked about. Another example there would be, for instance, the swimsuit inspired by the surface texture of a shark, which ultimately led to the actual swimsuit being banned because it was so aerodynamically efficient in the water. It cut through the water and gave an unfair advantage and Ian Thorpe wore that, but it was actually banned in the Olympics. A few more examples here, some of which we've covered and uh, some of which you can actually research yourself. Janine Benayas is the leading expert on this topic and there are some links here that I'm going to put in a separate document for you to look at, which are well worth looking at. For instance, her TED Talks here is uh, really, really interesting and well worth a look. This is da Vinci's sketch of the Vitruvian man based on a mathematician, Vitruvius. And it's apparently a perfect representation of the human body uh, in proportion. Fibonacci sequence, which you may or may not have covered in maths already. Um, if you look at the proportion there, it's 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and 21. And we can actually find this proportion in the human body. And we can find this proportion throughout nature. And what we're going to look at now is the fascinating link between nature and beauty and how we can use mathematics, proportion, and nature to give us um, inspiration for designs and symmetry and patterns and you know beauty and proportion in our designs. So I'm going to show you a short video now uh, based on the mathematics of Fibonacci and the golden ratio.
So apologies there for actually speeding up the video, um, but this is a short webinar and I will put the links up afterwards. And I find that video, I love that video. It's absolutely inspiring just to see the complexities of nature. And when we actually look at where we can find these mathematical proportions, I think you'll find it quite uh, fascinating to see where we can find them, whether it's in nature and flowers or in shells, the human face even, or looking at ancient designs like the Greek Parthenon and how the proportion has been laid out in the golden rectangle. And within the golden rectangle, we have a golden spiral, which we can actually find in the galaxy and um, patterns of hurricane. And this has been realized by way back when even they were designing structures like the Parthenon and the pyramids of Giza, which are still a mystery and one of the seven wonders of the world. So looking at nature and looking at inspiration for design and biomimicry is a tool that we can really exploit. And not only can it help us design better ways of doing things and newer ways of, of solving problems, it can give us inspiration for aesthetics and beauty. And if you watch the TED Talks that I mentioned earlier, um, you'll notice that biologists, scientists, engineers, product designers, um, and leading experts are coming together and starting to look at nature and using each other's knowledge, researching nature to try and solve some of the, the greatest problems that we face today. For example, global warming and better ways of making things, or looking at water purification, for instance, and how we can look at nature to help us solve some of these global challenges. So I hope you enjoyed that webinar and I hope you will check out some of the video links that I will leave up. So what we looked at today then was the concept of biomimicry. And hopefully we begin to appreciate how biomimicry can help innovation and good design. Thank you, year nine.